Hello everyone out there, this is Pastor Tony Galante coming back to you again with another video. I am Prophecy in Christ above all. Let me get right into it. Go ahead, subscribe and comment. Get, don't forget to give me some comments and so on and so forth. But today I want to talk to you about something. I want to talk to you about defense of the gospel and also what real prophecy is. Okay? We hear a lot about prophecy. Oh, this guy's a prophet, that guy's a prophet, this one's prophecy, prophecy here, prophecy there. Everybody's a and you know what? A lot of it is contrary to this book. Okay? Now people make prophecies per se, okay, because they're professing, but biblical prophecy is the only prophecy of all. The rest of them are just guesses, really, and they're ridiculous and they shouldn't be doing it. And that's where the defense of the gospel comes in. That's where the defense of the scripture comes in, okay? Um, some of us are actually called to defending the gospel, to defending the faith. I'm sure there are more, but there are very few who do it, and I think that's horrible, okay? Um, and, you know, you could go to a church, and your church could be pleasant and beautiful and everything else, but they don't teach you, many times they don't teach you to defend the Word of God, to defend the Gospels, to defend... Some people will even turn around and say, well, the Bible is the Bible, and it could defend itself. Oh, yeah? Okay. Well, if that's how you think, look at the current world and how it's falling apart. If that's what you can think, how come... When people hear the gospel, they get saved, and some, pe some people who don't hear it don't get saved. Huh? So you see, the gospel is very powerful, and we need to defend it. And um, as a matter of fact, Jude, the book of Jude, the small book of Jude, or the epistle, actually says that we need to contend for the faith in the spirit. Okay? You need to contend. What does it mean to contend? It means you've got to be right in there, going for it. Okay? And then, um, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, this is Paul, okay? He says here, We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God, and we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Okay? So you see, Paul is saying we need, we, not, not just we, all, the whole, the, everybody should be doing this, okay? And you may say, well, that's Paul. Paul says also that we need to do what he does. And even Jesus says we need to do what he does. That doesn't mean we have to, res you know, we can't, obviously, we can't resurrect from the dead ourselves, you know, and I'm not trying to be facetious in that statement. Um, or, you know, what it's saying here is, Whatever we, we know is right and wrong, we need to do it. We need to do what's right against the wrong. You know? You don't, uh, don't allow sex trafficking, you know? Some people are like, oh, I don't, that's not hurting me any. Oh, sorry, it is hurting you. It's hurting your society. It's hurting everything. It's hurting the person. You know, that person is a brother or sister in, in humanity, and it needs to be stopped. Okay? That kind of thing. But, you know... Just because let's get down to the gospel here, the Bible itself, you know, the word of God. We need to defend the gospel and we need to bring it to the point of destroying the speculations. Okay. You know, there are people out there who think that Christians are total off the track clowns. And you know what? We are not. And they don't, they put their faith in other things. And yet God is the one who gave them that faith, but they put it in other things. And in the end, they're going to find out where, where they stand with that improper attitude of faith, okay? So, <clears throat> I just want to show you another thing here, and I'll go into it in, in the sense of defense of the gospel here. Paul also says in Philippians chapter 1, verse 7, it says here, <clears throat> okay, it says here, for it is only right for me to feel this way about, about you all. See, Paul's thinking of the whole, everyone, he's thinking of us as well too. Because I have you in my heart, since both in my imprisonment, and Paul is struggling and suffering in prison. He was in the Maritime prison in, in Rome. 
dingy, dirty, filthy prison, okay? It was a, 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 a cistern, and it was damp. You know, I, I, when I went to Rome, I, I, was in, I went into that prison to see what it was like, okay? And it says here, since both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. So you see, Paul was put here to defend the gospel and to confirm it, all right, the gospel, for you are partakers of the grace of grace with me. So in other words, if we're partakers of the grace with, with him, we're supposed to be part of that too, the defense of it too, okay? And, uh, you know, the other side of the coin here is I'm going to get into the area of prophecy because I want to show you that there's two kinds of prophecy out there, okay? One is valid and one is totally invalid, okay? And I'm going to show you that it's crept into the church so deep that we need to really open our eyes for this because this is crazy. It's really bad, okay? It makes us look like we don't know what we're doing. It, it makes the world laugh at us when we do that, okay? Okay, let's get into that. Let's get into this stuff, okay? Uh, let's go to, I'm going to get into it soon. Um, let's go to Peter, 1 Peter 3.15, I believe it is. 1 Peter 3. But sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts always being ready to make a defense. We have to make a defense for Christ and for the gospel. A lot of people don't do any of that. They just don't care. They think it's not part of being a Christian because if I'm a good person, everybody's going everybody's to come to Christ because of my actions. Well, guess what? It's not through your actions. It's through your words. It's through what you say. It's not all just doing, being a good person or a good citizen. You don't get people into heaven that way. It's part of it, but you don't get into you don't get people into heaven with that. If anybody taught you that, they're all wet. Okay. If somebody says to you, "Well, you should be a good person," that's a good enough testimony. That's not the truth because you got to give a defense. All right. Now, if you're not the kind of person who gives a defense, you could still do something to promote who Christ is, verbally even too, okay? But it says here, uh, being ready to make a defense to just a certain group of people? No. Just a certain type of nationality? No. Just a certain race of people? No. Um, if your country is at war with, the, uh, with an opponent, you leave them out too? No, okay? What does it say here? To make a defense to everyone, everyone, okay? Who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, right? You got a hope? Share it. And the word hope there is not a uh, maybe, maybe not. It's a guarantee, right? Like I say, like I say, you know, I, you know, I know that the rapture is going to play, take place, right? If I said I hope the rapture is going to take place, it depends on how you, where I'm coming from. If I said that biblically, I know it's going to absolutely happen. It's, it will. Because biblical hope is a guarantee, but the worldly hope is a gamble. That's wrong, okay? So, account for the hope that is in you, yet with gentleness and reverence, Okay? Okay, you don't go up to, uh, you know, a, a leader in another nation or a leader in another, you're, you're, just, you're just a clown, you're an idiot. No, you don't do that. You tell them, well, this is my hope, this is my reason, this is what I stand for. I could take you through scripture if you want me to, and let's do it, okay? And if they accept, they accept. If they don't, they don't. That's not your problem, you know? It's not that you did something wrong. You did the best you could, okay? But we need to be on the defense because there's too much stuff going on today do you know that all this fentanyl coming over over the border and everything else is related to witchcraft hmm? and witchcraft is not a nice thing so you know what 
You know, drugs are related to witchcraft. So we need to open our eyes to that. Okay, pharmakia, where we get the word pharmacy from. So let's open our eyes to these things. Let's not, you know, just be surface Christians, you know, like the little skin on the top of the water. This water's got a little tiny skin. Christ wants us to be a full glass with great depth, okay? That's what we need to be striving for. And it's a tough time in, in, in this day and age to do that, but we got to keep pushing, you know, if that's what you really want to do. Okay, now, what I want to do is, I want to go to Second Peter, okay? Second Peter, um, chapter 1, verse 19, I'm going to read down to probably... Uh, verse 2, 3, okay? Um, verse 19. This is talking about false prophets. Remember I told you there's one prophecy that's real, another one that's not? Okay? Okay. And so, we have the prophetic word, which is the word of God, okay? Made more sure. It's the most absolute sure of them all, Okay? To which you do well to pay attention, as to a lamp shining in the dark, okay? That means if you're in the dark and you got this lamp, it's gonna give you the it's gonna give you the way to through it, okay? But remember you're dealing with the dark, okay? Doesn't mean everybody's gonna see it that way, okay? Because everybody sees it the wrong way, it's out there, it's dark. But if you've got that this lamp in your hand, right? It's showing you, it's guiding you through it all, okay? Shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Okay, you know what that means. I don't have to get until, you know, the morning star rises and so on and so forth. I mean, some people, call, you know, one of the names for Christ is a, is a bright, bright morning star, but okay. But, ne but know this, first of all, first of all, know this, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture has a matter of one's own interpretation, okay? Now, it's not a matter, it's an interpretation, okay? You don't sit there and say, well, Isaiah 53 means the nation, it doesn't mean Christ. No, that, it means Christ, because it's talking about a human being, Okay? You don't sit there and flip it around and say it's a nation, you know, or anything like that. You just don't turn it around to fit you. You have to let it fit who it is, and it's Christ, okay? Um, so it's not a matter of a personal interpretation. Now, there are, there are times where there's an illumination that the Holy Spirit can give you. There's times that you can see something that others may not have seen. It doesn't mean it's you're interpreting it. It means you're seeing it. It's an illumination. Like, there are going to be plenty of people saved even in the tribulation. All right? I know 144,000 are going to be saved in the tribulation. And they're going to be like the Apostle Paul's roaming the earth. So what's going to happen then? They're going to bring more, bring more people during the time of the tribulation, right? Oh, no. Uh, God is finished with Israel. No, they're not. No, he's not. He is not. Look, it's, that's a fact right there. To have somebody tell you that God is finished with Israel is a personal interpretation. And that goes from one person to another, to another, to another. And this is what you end up with. Just nothing but squawking false, false teaching. It's false. Okay. I'm, I, I like that little thing. Um, so anyhow, um, that's, that's the way you have to think. Okay, there's no personal interpretation here. But you have to look at the scripture too, okay? Now that doesn't mean that if there's something there that nobody's really taught much of, but was there at one time, that's not a personal interpretation either, okay? You're just bringing it back and showing it. Okay, what I mean, I'll get into that later, okay? For, <clears throat> for no prophecy has ever been no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will. Nobody, and but I mean nobody, and I mean nobody on the face of the earth 
should ever think that they can think of a prophecy based on their own will. It's my way or no way. It's God's way or no way. That's the way it goes, okay? And it doesn't mean collectively either. Let me say something to you, okay? God told a certain person in the past to make a boat, okay? Noah, we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Noah. And I'm sure they really laughed at him. Thought he was a total clown doing that. But we wouldn't be here today. All right? But of course, the earth was very sinful in those days too. Okay? But how about somebody like, hmm, let's say David. King David? Hmm? How about him? who sees this giant insulting the, 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 the one true God of Israel, and everybody's cowardly and can't stand and make a stand for the defense of the, the, the truth of their, of their God, which is our God, you know. And David's just a kid. He was only supposed to go there and give his brothers lunch, per, per se. And, you know, Saul, is king, the king, Wanted to put armor on him. He says, get this stuff off me. I don't want this stuff. I don't need it. It's holding me back. He goes out and kills Goliath. Hmm? Was he a disobedient person? No. He stood out. But was he trying to stand out? No. He was just trying to do the will of God. That's the key, right? And you know, the Pope currently says that when Jesus, you know, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase this thing right now because I don't have... When Jesus, you know, they went to the, they went away, you know, the whole family went away, I guess to the temple, what have you, and then they left, and they left Jesus behind, right? And he said, you, you should have known, basically, I was going to be in my father's house. The Pope turned around and said he was disobedient. He was a disobedient son. You watch this Pope, because he's not on the right track. He's very anti-biblical. And that's the only prophecy that's real and good. Biblical prophecy. Not some stupidity out there that somebody makes up, you know, and so on and so forth. And we could go to Joseph in the Old Testament too. His, his brothers, right? His brothers wanted to kill him and then they ended up selling him into slavery. But he became the second most powerful man in Egypt. And what did he do? He saved his, he saved, he saved his family and he saved Israel in that respect, in the physical sense, right? So sometimes a person will stand out, not because they want to stand out, and maybe they know a little bit about it, because look what Joseph did with the coat and so on and so forth. They don't want to stand out on purpose, but it happens. And God is working with them too. And we need to understand, listen to that, okay? Listen to them. Cautiously, okay? Okay, so... Um, but know this first, okay, of all. Okay, there's no prophecy, okay, the interpretation. For no prophecy was ever made by an act of, of human will, but man moved by God, moved by the Holy Spirit, excuse me, spoke from God. In other words, they were born along as they wrote, because the Holy Spirit born them along, right? Okay. That's the that goes under the inspiration and canonicity of the scripture. Actually, inspiration more so. Okay, but then Peter goes on and says here, but false prophets also arose among the people. You don't think false prophets come today? Yeah, there's a lot of them out there. Just as there will be, will also be false teachers among you. So we got false teachers and we got false prophets. Okay? There's a lot of false teachers. Oh, don't worry about that. Don't tell a little kid that, you know, you know, mommy and daddy, ministers, I've said, mommy and daddy, uh, uh, your mommy passed away and she's with the animals and uh, it's almost like a reincarnation thing I've heard one time. I was floored with that. I was like, huh? Huh? You know? And she's going to come back, you know? And I was floored with it. It was horrible. You don't teach little kids that are so impressionable the wrong stuff just to get your own pride across. And your own, you know, you want to comfort them. Yeah, but find a way to comfort them the right way. 
Not with a lie, not with a twisting of the truth, you know? So, okay, the many false teachers among you, okay? Who will secretly induce destructive heresies? You know what that means. Even denying the master who bought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. You know, in other words, they're finished. They go off the track. They're finished, right? And many will follow their sensuality. What they want, what they want to see. They want to have their Bentleys and they want to have their planes and they want to have their, I'm a minister and I deserve this so I could get a boat. Meanwhile, they got people starving to death in their church, and they're not doing anything for her. Okay? That's not good. And because of them, the way of the truth is what? We'll be maligned. Yep. Or maybe how about this getting up and going, I'm smoking tongues. People think you're crazy. I had a friend in New York. This is a true story. I had a friend in New York one time. He had some kind of a gold bladder problem or something like that. I don't know what it was. A kidney stone or whatever. He was in the hospital. And this guy, you know, he, he was a Christian. He was a Hebrew Christian, you know. And the, cool, the funny part of it was <laughs> he told me this other guy next to him had a guitar and he was kind of into his tongues and stuff like that. He says, all right, if the guy believes in Jesus Christ, let him. Which we really shouldn't because it really does, it's really not the way it should be today, you know. But anyhow, the doctors came in and the nurses came in and he starts speaking in tongues. And people came to visit and everything. And they ran out of that room, scared to death, thinking the guy was out of his mind. That's what it means to be maligned. Christ is maligned because of that craziness, right? Okay? And I've got a lot of stories, a lot more stories. Like the wife that goes home and she's trying to make her bring her, bring her, her husband to Christ. And she cooked, you know, she makes the meal, and there's peas and carrots in the plate, peas and carrots mixed, and she's got to pray for the peas, and then she's got to pay for the carrots separate. I mean, it, it, it's just kind of crazy stuff, you know? This is immature, right? And that's where we get maligned. A man who sees that is going to say, They're out, she's out of her mind. Hmm? And I've seen even some conservative-type churches destroy marriages, and I have no problem facing those people. Because I've seen it with my own eyes. No problem facing them at any time. I don't care what they know, what they don't know. I'll fa I can face them. So, let's move on from there. And then uh, the third verse goes on here and says here, and, and in their greed, see, it's obviously there's a greed part, part there, they will exploit you with false words. In other words, they're going to lie through their teeth about you. Or he's one of these, or he did that, or he, she did that, or he did this, and there's something wrong with it. You know, you know the, the greatest thing today is you could either make a person look like a criminal, or you could make them look like they're crazy. Ha! <laughs> but not, but the Lord won't allow it for certain people because they're going to stand strong on who he is, right? And even if they falter, Christ is still going to help them out. I guarantee that. Okay. With false words... Their judgment from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. So this is the kind of people they pretend themselves to be that way. That's wrong. Okay. Now, what I want to talk, talk, to, you, talk to you about is this. You know, it's not just prophecy, but it's everything. It's all the teachings and everything else. But there's a, there's a biblical prophecy, all right? Biblical prophecy comes through the scripture. It's got to be accurate. It's 100% accuracy. Do we have prophets who, need, who tell the, who can predict the future today? No, absolutely not. I heard one person get on the TV and he was hanging, he was really, really flying high. He says, that is one of these last, you know, guys being elected president, not elected president, whatever. He says, I have a prophecy. He says, you're going to be president. Well, it turned out to be that the guy maybe was a president. He was supposed to be the president, but he wasn't the president this time. And you got the people in there who try to be intellectual about it. Well, 
does it have to be 100% or not? Or maybe it really was true, but it was taken away. No, it's got to be 100% accurate from every angle, okay? And if the rapture is going to take place, it's going to be 100% accurate according to the scripture. That's the key. Not some guy flying around in a plane saying, you know, um, I have a prophecy for you and you're going to be the president, whatever. Doesn't work. What do you think people, what do you think people thought of Christianity after he made a statement like that? Huh? People claim prophecies and people are doing it all over the place, all over the place. They take a little tiny thing and they stretch it out and they dredge it out. You know, maybe there was a storm there or maybe there was a flood there and they dredge it out and they dredge it out and, and, dredge it out. and they make a big mess. And it has nothing to do with Christ. Nothing to do with Christ. It has nothing to do with his word. Okay? So that's not biblical prophecy. That's prophecy on their own. And let me tell you something too. too. You got these, these clowns like Nostradamus. I'm not afraid to say this. And you got people like, you know, cultures in the past, like the Mayans. And you got the Egyptians, and you know, of, of the culture-wise. You got them all, you know, all having these prophecies about when the end is going to come, the end of the world, and all this other stuff. We're already past that baloney. But you know what? I knew it was baloney from the beginning. And you know why I knew it? Because it wasn't according to Scripture, the Bible. And why do people go back to paganistic religions and try to up, dredge up that garbage and not read the scripture? Why do they do that? Because they're not of God. And they're trying to prove the Bible or disprove the Bible. And you don't have to prove the Bible is real because it is. Get off that kick because it's wrong, you know? All right. Now I want to go to um, Romans uh, chapter 12. I want to show you something. <clears throat> okay. Romans 12. Okay. You know, it starts off with, you know, dedicated service for the Lord. Okay. Verses 1 and 2 and 3 and so on and so forth. But then later on, it goes and starts talking to you about different gifts. And since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us exercise them according to, accordingly, okay? If prophecy according to the proportion of his faith, okay? If service in his serving, okay? Or he who teaches in his teaching and exhortation, and he, you know, and he who exhorts in his exhortation, and he who gives in, with, with, you know, liberality, he who leads with diligence, that's the ruling one, um, and he who shows mercy with cheerfulness, okay, and so on and so forth, without hypocrisy, okay. You've got conservative churches out there, and they're very conservative, they're, they're doctrinally strong, but they do not believe the prophecy is for today. And prophecy is for today. You know why? Because they're probably doing it and they don't realize it. It's different from teaching, different from teaching. It's, it's knowing what's there through the scripture right? And coming to the right conclusion of what the scripture teaches, okay? In other words, if Paul says, you know, uh, the, the scripture says that we're going to be delivered from the day of uh, testing, that's your rapture right there, okay? I mean, that's what prophecy is. It shows you that. And that's a gift that has not been you know, everybody thinks they're a teacher, and everybody thinks they're one of these. Everybody, That's a gift that's been maligned, and I'm going to give you my defense against it, because it's, I know where I'm standing with this one. You always have to be 100% accurate with the, gift of prophe- with the gift of prophecy. But you know what? We don't prophesy like that anymore. We prophesy through the scripture, nowhere else. Not tomorrow you're going to have a, an earthquake, or tomorrow you're going to be president, or tomorrow you're going to blow your nose ten times. That's ridiculous, okay? This is the key. The key is right here. The scripture. If, you, if you're not understanding what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, the gift of prophecy is still alive, and I'm going to give you the guarantee of it. 
The book of Romans, for some Christians may not know this, the book of Romans, and not because it's Romans, and I'm Italian origin, it has nothing to do with that. You can shove it out. Take it away. You can call it the book of the Irish. I don't care. Okay? But the book of Romans is the strongest, most powerful doctrinal book in the whole Bible. And if you take that one word out, you just deciphered the whole thing. And you know what? People just don't want to click that into their head. Huh? That's the problem. Look at it. Take a word and say, well, that doesn't, that's not for today. That's wrong. Because these gifts are only the fund, they're the fundamental gifts. And we all still have them. We still have teaching. We still have giving. We still have exhortation. We still have, you know, mercy and, and, and service. And what happened to prophecy? And what, what really freaks people out today is when a person's got faith and sees these things within the scripture, they're like, I got to stay on the narrow, tight path because I, I'm scared. Well, guess what? You weren't given a spirit of fear. You were given a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. So get off that kick too, okay? Everyone else out there who's not, who says they're prophesying and they're telling you that this is going to happen and this is going to happen. And the government here, if it's not truly happening through the scripture properly, it's a lie, okay? That's it. So you've got a lot of false prophets out there too and false teachers. And it's your responsibility to stay on track with the scripture. Period. That's it. Okay? All right. I hope you understood what I'm saying. If you got comments, give me comments. Got questions, give me questions. All right? Lord bless you and uh, keep your chin going. Okay, keep, keep your chin. <laughs> keep your chin going. Yeah, keep it going forward. No. You got any questions? Keep your chin up and uh, 